having a little surprise there of, um, well, the surprise we had was that we had to think of these additional chords. And that was cool. And then we added the, the, we said that that was giving it extra energy. And then those energies had to kind of balance. So I think that works. Let's give it a shot. Ladies and gentlemen, sirs and madams, wherever you are, thank you as always for your time and attention. Today we are continuing composing a ballad in C full tonality. This is part 10, moving forward part three. Today we started out with a plan to focus on variation two. And we said we wanted to, you know, pick up where we left off. We got two lines done in the last session here. And uh, we didn't get any of that done. <laughs> we, we diverted. All of a sudden, we decided to, to jump back to variation, the first variation, which is in magenta here. And we reminded ourselves that we had done all this work already for um, for variation one. And gee whiz, if we really wanted to add passing chords, why don't we continue that exercise and see, you know, what it sounds like and is it really, let's say, going to be worth it if we try to do that for all of the rest of the ballads. So that's what we did. And it's really neat how it sounds, uh, we decided. But not only that, and not only that, we ended up adding not only a row here for passing chords, uh, we, we realized we'd missed a few passing chords uh, the first time around. And we added them like this, this chord, this passing chord this C, C, D, those are passing chords. I said, whoa, how did we miss that? And so we went back to our reference diagram and said, oh, there's a red note back here somewhere. And we're getting a red, 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 orange. And, and, and we, need to, we need to add that in here somehow. OK, well, we did that. Then we said, oh, and look, on the other end, there's an orange, red, red, and we need to add a passing chord that represents that. And so we did. So that was, uh, that came about because we kind of switched tracks and said, oh, let's go back and finish two lines over here of getting all the passing chords in. So we did that. And so this is in here. That's one of those new ones. And this, uh, and there's another one somewhere down here. And the interesting thing about those entry and exit passing chords is they're not really chords, they're just two notes. But they still have an orange note in them, so they count. And so we went back to our friend, the consonance diagram, and we added that in. It turns out we were adding an interval of two, like C to D, and there's only one interval in a, in a single like that, and it has a consonant of two, which is quite nice and quite high. Pleasing. It's in the middle. Remember our consonance diagram. This is the middle range of the two-ish. The one-ish down here is the low consonance, and the three-ish is the high consonance. Not only that, when we started adding the rest of the uh, passing chords in um, in bear with me variation one this was all back to variation one we were doing it we said uh oh yeah that was a two one and a two one we just hadn't gone back and labeled it and 
And down here we have a 1, 2, and a 2, 1, and there's the G2, that's just a G, see what that looks like, that's a G2. Well, what are these 1, 2s and 2, 1s? Oh, look at our consonants model. Well, it turns out the 2, 1s and the 1, 2s, they're up there in the middle. They sound good. And the 2, 3 is technically even better. So, so we started to feel good about further good about these passing chords, even though they're kind of strange, strange chords, technically their consonance is still high. And we said, well, we're adding some texture, like we said last time, to the, to the original version. Then finally, we said, oh yeah, and what we were planning to do was take these chords, the bass chords, and spread them out into a da 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 And so we did it. And we were worried that this da 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 plus blink, 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 blink would be too, too much. But, but we tried it and it, it sounded okay. And, and the reason we were afraid it was going to be too much is we said, well, we've also, we've already got a very careful energy story being told here. in the cadences, you know, and the sub arcs and all that, episode two, serial one, et cetera. And then we said, oh, wait a minute, what are you talking about energy? And we said, oh, well, the cadence has energy factors here. So tempo, cadence, every one of these factors that we've listed can make the energy go up. So if we suddenly, um, and one of them is, uh, we already took care of that. And then we said, well, wait a minute. Now we're going to add um, arpeggios. And that's like, instead of da, da, it's like da, 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 da. And that's, that's uh, figure complexity and it implies speeding up and it, it's going to raise the energy. Oh my God, is it going to raise the energy too much? Then we said, well, what about in here? We're, we're throwing all these in here. Well, those are kind of reinforcing the melody. And then not only that, we do have the backbone. So if you count up the melody energy up here, plus the backbone reinforcing energy, plus call it half of the passing chord energy, you know, you've got three energy boosters up in the upper line. And now we take the bass chords and the added arpeggios and then about call it half of this. Yeah, maybe it'll balance, maybe it'll work. So let's give it a shot, we said, and we did. So we compared the original. said nice nice well, that's the way it was before so of course it's nice now I said oh interesting and and the first time we played it it sounded like oh too much going on too much going on and then we realized well these arpeggio da, 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 whatever it's called are helping keep the energy interest up in this last half because this is bang 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 versus and then in here where uh, anyway it sounded good we thought so I said yeah we think we're going to do that so we took the time to go back and make sure all of our labels are consistent again with how we started you know this whole composition the melody the backbone it's now called the backbone the passing chords have been are going to be added over here as an official layer the bass chords arpeggiation will be an official layer and then the bass chords cadence so we've got we've got our new five line structure figured out for two lines and only in the first variation and if we use, look at our checklist, 
that is exactly what this shows. So reassured that this idea sounds good and then now we're going to have to add something that says you know base chord arpeggios in place we can return our attention to variation two finish its little checklists which are still pending <laughs> and then when everything has got all its little checklists including these added and hopefully these we'll be in a position to rock and roll so, sirs and madams, wherever you are, thank you as always for your time and attention. I don't take it for granted. It really gives me energy to imagine you looking over my shoulder. And I do appreciate the feedback I get from you between streams, and I try to incorporate it. I do incorporate it. As always, keep on streaming. <laughs>